But today is the first Sunday of the month, so every first Sunday is our Mission Sunday. We always pick up a missions offering for Sunday. We don't pass a, 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 an offering a basket uh, every week, only once a month, and it's a missions offering. It always, none of that money, not a penny of it stays in-house. We send it for some uh, ministry we're partnering either for global or local missions. And I mentioned last week we have a special ministry that we are, we're partnering with. It's something different. We're actually not going to be passing an offering today, but you're going to have an opportunity to partner with Compassion International. As you see, uh, the banner and the table set up. Some of you may already have gone uh, back there to see uh, what was going on. And so let me just uh, set this thing up from the Scripture. It's always good to start in the Word of God. Amen? Always good to begin in the Word. Let's start uh, in Mark chapter 10. I'm going to read a few Scriptures and just to set the stage of what we're doing here today. Mark 10, 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have Him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. Now, come on. How many of y'all know that's more than just a little bit mad? He was indignant. He was furious. He was fuming. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Childlike faith. That's where we get that from. But this is what I want to focus on. And he took the children in his arms put his hands on them, and bless them. I love that. By the way, let's welcome uh, the children because they actually brought in Kids Life, brought the kids in with us, the elementary. Come on, why don't we wave to our, our Kids Life children over there and, and, and the leaders over there. Praise God. Thank you all for serving. See, it was customary in those days for parents to bring uh, their children to the Jewish rabbis uh, to get to, to have them bless them. So it was reasonable that these parents were bringing uh, their kids to Jesus. Now, some of these kids were infants, scholars say, and he was actually holding them in their arms. Some were, were uh, younger uh, uh, children that could walk and whatnot. Uh, and so Jesus shows us in here his love and concern for children. Amen? Question is, why would the disciples try to stop the kids and, and rebuke these people from bringing their children. Well, chances are they were probably thought they were doing a good thing and maybe doing Jesus a favor, you know, trying to help protect him or, or help his strength, conserve his energy because of all the ministry was doing. And that may seem good on the surface, but really what they were doing is they were acting like uh, children were less important than what Jesus had going on. That's why Jesus said, hey, don't stop them from coming to me. They're just as important as anybody else I'm ministering to. Amen? And that's what, what Jesus, that's the point he was saying, right? See, their attitude and their response was strange, though, because Jesus had already taught them to receive Jesus in, uh, to receive children in their, in, in Jesus' name and be careful not to, to, to cause them to stumble. Let's read another verse here in Mark uh, chapter 9. We see the chapter right before, Mark 9, 33 and 37. Then after they arrived in Capernaum and settled in a house, Jesus asked his disciples, what were you discussing out on the road? But they didn't answer because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. He sat down, called the 12 disciples over and said, whoever wants to be first must take last place and be a servant of everyone else. Then he put a little child among them. Then taking the child in his arms, he said, Jesus said to them, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also my Father who sent me. So when we receive children, when we love on children, when we bless children, Jesus said we're receiving him and even the Heavenly Father as well, right? We see this in both these scriptures, how he takes these precious little ones in his arms, loves them, and blesses them. And what a blessing that may, must have been. Getting blessed by the Messiah, the Lord Jesus himself. Amen. I could just picture those parents after Jesus dis rebuked the disciples. Like, yeah, man, get out of my way. I'm bringing my kids to Jesus. Like, uh, you know, right? Like, I'm going to get a special blessing today, right? So obviously for us, the application is we can do the same thing with our own kids and also children, especially children that maybe don't have their, their parents anymore, maybe a mom or a dad. I love what Commander David and them were doing in Royal Rangers. A lot of these boys that they're discipling and loving on don't have fathers. And so they're becoming a father to these boys. And Commander David, just honor you and what y'all have been doing. And that's their heart. Their heart is not just about teaching boys how to tie knots and make fire, so to speak. They do a lot more, but a lot of outdoors things. But they're being a father to the fatherless. That's what they're, they're really what they're doing, right? So we can do those kind of things like we commanded David. And many of you are doing, even our kids' life ministry, they're loving on these kids, not only their own, but others. But Jesus teaches us another way that we can bless children and what he considers the least of these. Because you remember, the disciples 
thought that children were less important than what Jesus had going on, right? And that's why Jesus rebuked them and said, no, let me, let me bless them and hold them and, and pray over them and speak a blessing. So let's see another way Jesus said, Matthew 25, 34 through 40. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. So he's talking to believers here, those that have put their trust in Christ at the, at the end time. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when do we see, ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king, speaking of himself, he was telling a parable. Jesus will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. So we see loving on, giving attention to, but also those that seem least feeding, clothing, giving water, giving food, giving shelter. And in our day and age, giving education, medical attention can be added to that. Again, as I say, today we have a great opportunity to partner with Compassion International. We have a couple of guests uh, with us that are going to help me, you know, who have been rescuing children from extreme poverty all over the world for many years. Josh, how long has Compassion uh, existed? 72 years. For 72 years, my brother Josh is here with us. He works for Compassion, been with him for four years. He'll be, he'll be up here in, in a little while to, to tell you a few more things. I love their mission statement. It's releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. They're not just releasing kids from poverty, but it's in Jesus' name. And you're going to hear a little bit more about that. You know, there's over 355 million children worldwide who are trapped in poverty. And this is extreme poverty, like not even clean water or food or any opportunities like that. And Compassion's working to change that. You know, uh, poverty, this kind of extreme poverty damages a child's growth, learning and development, which pre prevents them from reaching their God-given potential and their purpose. We talk about it all the time. Our vision here for you to know God, live free, find your purpose, and make a difference. Every single person that is born has a God-given purpose. Right? But extreme poverty can hinder that purpose that God has for their life. Well, compassion is successfully intervening in children all over the world. But this requires holistic care. And they do this through their child development program that addresses the, both the physical, mental, emotional, and the most important spiritual needs of each child. So as I first got connected with, with Compassion through Josh, as he reached out to me a, a couple of times, and the second time we connected, a little inside joke with me and him, and so I'm glad we finally connected and started hearing about the heart of the ministry and, and, and what they do. And we were familiar with this model, so to speak, of ministry, because my wife and I actually sponsored a child through World Vision, which is very similar to a Compassion in the sense of how they operate. I'll tell you in a minute why I really like what Compassion's doing. So we sponsored a child for 10 years named Stella. She was in Kenya, Africa, and so I was familiar with, with what they do, but as I heard their heart, and actually, as I told you, one of the things that really got me to want to partner with Compassion is that everything Compassion does is through the local church, both stateside and globally. Whenever uh, a child is sponsored through Compassion, they, they have to be connected through a local church, and you're going to hear a real-life testimony about that here in a minute. So, I was felt led as I prayed and talked to him to sponsor kids in Bolivia. There's a, a huge a group of, of kids. There are actually, before the first service, over 200 kids at the same church in the area of Bolivia in extreme poverty that need support, that need sponsorship, that need love, care, and prayer. Let me give you a few facts about Bolivia. Bolivia has the lowest per capita income of any country in South America. Its income equality is the highest in Latin America and one of the highest in the world. Many parents in Bolivia are unemployed and families lack access to clean water. Nearly 25% of the people in rural areas of Bolivia have no access to clean, safe water. Can you imagine that? Like we get news feeds whenever the, the water's out in the cities and like, oh, it's a ball water advisor. You have to boil your water to get clean. Could you imagine not having any access ever to clean water? And there's no, with no other option, many families rely on contaminated water sources Water sources, which can lead to deadly diseases. They could actually get sick and get ill and actually die from it. And of course, because most families have little to no income, lack of food and nutrition is also a serious issue. 
So as I mentioned, we have a very special guest with us as well. Uh, from uh, uh, She's originally from Bolivia, and she knows firsthand of, of, of the, um, the state, the trials, the extreme poverty in Bolivia. Her name's Miriam, and she's going to come up and share with us. Why don't we give Miriam a, a good family life welcome as she comes uh, with us uh, today. God bless you, Miriam. God bless you. Go ahead and have a seat. So Miriam is going to share. She's what they call a compassion alumni because she was born and raised in Bolivia and uh, and she lived in this extreme poverty. So she's going to tell us her testimony and her story today. Thank you. Thank you, family and life of church for having me. And let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, yes, for thank today. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, yes. for this time to share what you did in my life, uh, yes, what you saw in me. And, and thank you so much for this time to to glorify yes. you with yes. my testimony yes and and unlocking all these plans that you have for me thank you lord i pray for this beautiful church in the name of jesus christ amen yes. amen so amen. my name is miriam uh miriam alegre in spanish alegre means happy but as a growing up back in back in bolivia i never thought of myself as happy because i was um I was sad uh, when I was around eight years old, my father passed away. So it was hard for me to find an identity, someone who can care for me. So I was just felt very sad, frustrated, and um, with no hope in my life. But, and I started to ask my mom, mom, where is my dad? Where, why I cannot find love. And then God, God put in my heart that he has good plans for my life. Amen. And then my mom told me, hey, if you think that you are here is for a reason. So then I asked God, God, is this, is this that I'm here is for a reason? And then he showed me that yes. And when I most needed it, God, put compassion into my life and show me who 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 I am and Isaiah 41 says let me read uh, and Isaiah 49 that uh, I am the Lord your God who takes all of your right hand and says to you do not be afraid I will take I will take care of you. So then Amen. Jesus hold my hand and he take care of me. I was uh, a little girl back at home and I couldn't have food to eat. And I asked my mom, mom, where can I find food? And I remember one night and we were just there and my mom arrived late at home and we couldn't have to eat my four siblings. And we would just cry. The typical food that we had was just rice, potatoes, and some salad. And that was our meal every day. Like affording a couple of milk, it was just for special days, like weekends. And so every day was not, not there because it was expensive. And meat also, like having meat, it was just for, for Christmas day, like a big party's day. But thank you, Jesus, that provide compassion into my life. I had to go three times a week over there, and they give me some uh, snacks and also some lunch. They can provide my 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 needs. But through compassion, they gave me yearly medical examination. But the biggest problem was that I I was detected as a malnourished in those medical examinations. So I, I was just very, uh, vulnerable in that area. And they started to feed me extra special meals, like high vitamins, proteins, and lipids, like a very delicious smoothie with crackers for kids that were underweight. At that age, around eight, nine years old, for me, it was a privilege to have that cup of smoothie and and yeah. cracker so I, every time that my tutors would call on me would say hey Miriam, it's your turn i'm like yeah i'm here 
<laughs> so they will guide me to become a future mom, a future mentor, a future wife. And so they will, they were there for me. When I was, um, but this miracle wouldn't have been possible if God wouldn't provide help through Compassion International. So a name, uh, Sinova from Portland, Oregon, uh, she went one day at Michael W. Smith concert and God touched her heart to compa- to sponsor me. And since the day that she sponsored me, she started to write letters and she told me, God loves you. God will take care of you. You are smart. You are beautiful. When I was little growing up, I never thought of myself as beautiful and precious because I thought that beautiful and precious is just for girls with a good father who take care for them. But me, I didn't have a father. I was, I was not enough, I would say, seeing other kids having their parents who can say at least I love you or provide for their families. But Sinova was there. Jesus showed me through Sinova how much he loves me. And I start to believe that God has good plans for my life. Even if my father was forsaken me, but God will hold me tight. Yes, amen. So God was using Sinova in such a lonely time in my life. And Sinova become not only my sponsor, becomes my mentor. Sinova was there. I never met her when I was in the project. We met for 20 years, just letters and pictures, and we just communication by, by letters. But for the goodness of the Lord, God has good plans. Yeah. I got to meet her when I arrived to the United States. It was such a gift for me because I was like, wow, this lady who I talked since I was five until 23 years old, I got to marry her and I tell her, thank you so much for my, give me my high school education and also give me my college degree education so thank you her that uh, I get to graduate high school even though I was not good at reading God touched my mind God opens my my mouth to talk Spanish read Spanish and also I challenge God one more time God if you really are God, you help me to learn Spanish, and now I want to talk English. And guess what? He did. Yes. God Amen. is God of Amen. miracles. He touched and opened my mouth, my head, my ears to talk and listen. And so I tested God, and I tested God again and again, and he let me know that I'm worthy and precious in his side. So Sinova become my mentor, and now I got to have a communication. I got to bless her and tell her the little letter that you sent me changed my life. And she got to meet me or visit my second child last year uh, when I get birth. And so she's there also glorifying God because she never thought that I will grow. You know, I mean, she was doing her job, but she never thought. So because of Sinova sponsoring me, I went from being malnourished child to becoming a healthy young lady thriving. And because of Sinova sponsoring me through Compassion International, I went from being illiteracy to completing a college degree education in nutrition and to yes. speak three languages. Yes, amen. Because Sinova sponsored me, I become to have no father in earth, 
to tell Jesus that he is my heavenly father and everlasting. Yes, amen, amen. Dear Family Life of Church, when you sponsor a child, you are introducing Jesus as their Savior. You are yeah. giving them nutrition, education. You are letting them know that Jesus loves them. Yeah. So my father helped me teach me how to ride a bike. My sponsor helped my feet push the pedals. And my heavenly father stirs the way, unlocking all his good plans for my life. Yes, amen. A sponsorship changed lives. It changed mine and it will change yours too. The little girl that was what, that was in Bolivia now is a beautiful mom of two living in, in California, nutritionist and serving in the National Guard. Yes, amen. 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 That's awesome. Well, thank you for your service to our country as well, serving in the military. Yes. So she's obviously a wife and a, and a mom of, of, of two. So, uh, so Miriam, you know, one of the things I don't know if you caught, I want to, rein, uh, uh, to reiterate is that the reason why she was illiterate and she couldn't read was because directly connected to malnourishment. Because she was malnourished, she was telling Cassie and I, we had dinner with her last night, and Miriam was telling us that her mom would teach her and try to teach her how to read and to write, but she couldn't remember because of the malnourishment. Isn't that right, Miriam? Yeah. I mean, it was not because I didn't have support. At that time, I was already in school, first grade, second, third grade. I was, I had professors. My mom went to school until fourth grade. She know how to read. And so I had my tutors in compassion. But the biggest problem was, is not uh, them it was me because I was lacking those nutrients, important nutrients that make those connections in our brain. So thank you, Jesus, for compassion that provide these nutrients and for my tutors, my mom, who don't, don't give up, and for my faith because I tasted God. Yes. God, yeah. if you see yeah. this yeah, as yeah. a precious you are a God who gives wisdom, who, who, the ones who ask and knock. And he did. Yes. Yeah. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So she was malnourished as a child. It affected her ability to learn. And I don't know if you caught as well. And I wanted to even uh, elaborate a little bit. So she graduates high school and then college in Bolivia. And then she becomes a nutritionist. And tell us a little bit what, what you did in Bolivia as a nutritionist. So after I finished high school, I don't know, here are high schoolers, junior, but I felt lost. I felt like, what should I do? What should I study? And I went back to my life uh, plan, which we did in compassion program. We... um we plan our life from five years from now. And then at that time, when I finished high school, I went back to my tutors. Hey, where's my life plan? Because I'm lost. I don't know what to do next. And I found out in my life plan after taking those tests that my tutors used to help us to do. So I'm, I'm good at community health and health. And I asked Jesus, what should I study? And I went back in my childhood, how I struggled with nutrition and, and the, the save, the uh, inability of learning how to read. And I was so interested in what comes into our mouth and what, what it does, why it's so important. And God opens the door. I took the exam for the nutritionist um, career. As soon as I finished, God gave me the privilege to work in a countryside, talking Quechua, which I am indigenous, so I taught Quechua, and to teach moms in Quechua how important it is for their kids to feed them with dry food, like a breast milk and 
you know, like vitamins and all this uh, iron. So how important? And so because I I have the the authority to say, please, you know, I want them to be well nourished because God doesn't want them to be like that. Right. God wants them to be good, healthy, so they can develop and learn and achieve their potential in their lives. Amen. So I was very encouraged to just help their moms who lack of knowledge of what's good for their kids, so to to help them. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that an awesome story of redemption? Come on, isn't that amazing? <laughs> to be a nutritionist, going from where she was, and knowing the, the, the effect it had on her, the impact and how powerful uh, that is. And so as she mentioned, uh, you know, Today, if you sponsor a child, you're, you're going to help introduce children to Christ. And it's not just introducing them. Miriam said that whenever she was young, her parents went to church and she knew about God, but she didn't really get discipled until she got sponsored by Compassion. As I said, she was involved in a local church, but there's also a Compassion Center that helped disciple her. So tell us a little bit about the discipleship at the Compassion Center. So when I was growing up, we have uh, three areas where we used to work. Is one area which was Bible. So as like other curriculars, like a helping in our educational or school stuff, like math, reading, and other areas like hygiene and other areas like uh, handicraft. So we have specifically a class for Bible. So what we will do there is learn the parables learn about Jesus singing. Plus, with our, like, a local churches, like other churches, I would say, with compassion programs, we had the opportunity to compete, you know, like we will prepare ourselves and learn Bible verses or, or do love puppy. Yeah. Puppies, like uh, puppets, puppets, yeah. yeah, and like uh, share with our church with uh, or dramatizations, so different like uh, interactive ways to to learn more about the Bible yeah. and what we can we can teach also our classmates who were not believers. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah. So even being evangelistic as well, right? That's definitely. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So even I, that's awesome that she didn't mention that in the first service. So even like I said, getting getting coming to Christ, getting disciple, but also sharing with other classmates that that don't know the Lord as well. You know, it makes me think she shared it in the first service, but as she's saying, God's plan, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That God knows the, the God said, "I know the plans I have for you," says the Lord. Plans for good and not evil, for it give you a future and a hope. Yes. And that's what, you know, uh, Compassion, you can see, has done uh, for Miriam and so many other uh, um, uh, people like her as from a child. Uh, so let, let's let's look at the, the first picture. Uh, I mean, the first letter. Look at this. This is her at five years old. The first uh, uh, pack, the packet that she got her sponsor when she was five. And as Miriam said, uh, now she's a young lady who's married with two kids. Why don't, can we put her family picture up with her sponsor? So look at this. So this is her, her, her husband, Preston, on the right. And then her sponsors, the man in the middle and the lady all the way to the left. That's her sponsors, and they're holding their two children. So two children, Marcus is with her in, in kids' life, six months old, and Samuel is three years old, correct? Yes. Yeah. So two beautiful children, and we got to hang out with them and Marcus last night, Cass and I. And so, uh, so just a, such a powerful story. And I'll kind of wrap this part up with this. And Miriam said, told us this last night that, that through compassion, her sponsor, uh, she was rescued. Jesus rescued her from malnourishment, illiteracy, and unbelief. Right, where she truly put her trust. As she said, she said, I even tested the Lord a couple of times, right? And said, Lord, would you help me? And as you heard, she original language uh, uh, wasn't uh, Spanish. What is it again? Quechua. Quechua is her her first language. Then she learned Spanish and then now English. And then she do a great job in English. Amen. Yes. So you're doing awesome. You. Yes. Um, and 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 uh, also, Sanova is also still her mentor today. So as she mentioned, her dad died when she was young. But then her mom also passed away a few years ago. Yeah, I, I, my mom passed away in 2017. And the same year, for the goodness of the Lord, God gave me another mom. 
that was the same year that I met my sponsor. Yeah. So. Isn't that awesome? I never thought of me- meeting her, but God opens the door. The little girl, the photo yeah. that you guys see, the first picture that I never knew that picture until I visited her house. So she said, that was the first thing that I got <laughs> from you. And that's long time ago, long time ago. And I was like, oh, wow. So we are both transformed each other yeah. through the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. He's so good. Yes, amen. Come on, let's give God glory. Amen. And, you know, I want to show you one more picture. Uh, uh, but, you know, you all hear my story. You all know my story. We were talking last night. We both lost both of our parents. And, you know, Psalm 6 to 5 that says God's a father to the fatherless. And you heard her say God has become my heavenly father. But how he puts people strategically uh, in our lives. So her sponsor, not only did she get to meet her, come to the States, has helped continue to be a mentor. Although her mom was going, look at Miriam on her wedding day. This is her sponsor helping her get dressed on her wedding day. Isn't that awesome? It's amazing, right? And so even placed a mentor and another mother figure uh, in her life. Well, Miriam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being so bold and and sharing your testimony and just continuing to share the goodness of God and what he's done in your life. Amen. Come on, why don't we, why don't we thank her today? So thank you, Miriam. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, you, you have an opportunity today on Mission Sunday. We're not actually passing an offering and picking up a missions offering. This is the mission today. For $43 a month that you can sponsor a child, and it goes beyond sponsorship, as you saw, and you could actually see. Miriam's actually going to be at the table, one of the tables back there, um, if you would like to go and sponsor a child. And you could see some. She has a, a, a binder with some more of the letters that her sponsor wrote to her, some more of the pictures. And again, it's not just you're, you're given a financial, you know, amount every month. You get to write letters, send pictures of yourself, uh, interact uh, with, with your child, and even maybe one day meet the, your, the child that you sponsor. So, again, y'all have heard last week I talked about it. My heart and my vision behind this is not only to, to partner with Compassion, but as a very mission-minded church, you know, we were going to Belize and, and Puerto Rico this year on mission trips. I hope and pray one day we're going to take a mission trip to Bolivia. Amen? And if you sponsor some children, not only can we go, uh, Compassion sets it up, we can actually meet the children that we've sponsored over there, and I think it would be an awesome thing as a church. And so before I release you to go do that, like I said, $43 a month, you're helping them get the gospel, get discipled, but also physical food, clean water, medical attention, education, you you just heard has been so impactful in Miriam's life. Uh, But, you know, it's cool because when we were setting up uh, Thursday, we had a couple of staff members that already sponsored some kids. And this was really cool. Before, well, when when Josh reached out to me and I connected with Compassion, he starts telling me their heart and and the vision and and how they partner with local churches. I said, man, this is pretty awesome. Just a few months prior, uh, my wife and and, and our youngest daughter, Bella, was at a Phil Wickham worship conference. All y'all know who Phil Wickham is. They were at a worship night there. And Phil Wickham starts to talk about Compassion and how he sponsored a child through Compassion International. So Bella was only 12 years old at the time. So I get a text from her. She texts me and says, Dad, Compassion International is here. And there's a lady, her name's Kiwi, she's from the Philippines, and she said uh, she's sharing her story, as Miriam just did with us, of how compassion, God used compassion to change her life, and they had sponsorships like this. And so Bella said, Dad, I don't have the money to, to, to you know, spend, or to have, to be able to put up $43 a month. She said, but if you and mom would pay for it, I'll be willing to do extra chores to work it off so I can sponsor F2. And this is her little girl that, that Bella sponsored, F2. She's in Ethiopia, Africa. Isn't that awesome, y'all? And so uh, as a, we feel like as a family, we're sponsoring her. We're putting up the money. Bella's working it off. And again, we pray for her. When I pray over all my kids, I, I include F2 in there. That's, she's one of our children. Bella prays for her. Bella's been writing her, sending pictures. She's actually going to be at the back table. Bella will be as well, uh, helping out as well. So there, this morning we had over 200 kids in the same area at the same church in Bolivia. First service sponsored 54 kids this morning. So there's still 150 children in the same area at the same church in Bolivia that are waiting to be sponsored. There's packets back there. Uh, and again, if you want to sponsor, you feel led, we'd love for you to do that. If not, and you say, hey, Brandon, it's Mission Sunday. I was prepared to give uh, to to maybe a general mission. And, and, and you can do that as well this morning. If you want to just give to the general missions account, you can. 
Make sure you put it in the missions envelope, drop it in the tithe box on uh, your way out as well. And so to give you some more specific, I want to welcome my friend Josh from Compassion. Why don't we give it up for him? Amen. Good to have you, man. Yes, microphone. Oh, it's in my back pocket. I was having it for you. I was. Oh, <laughs> look at there. A little hide and go seek. Yeah. What an honor and privilege it is to be with you guys today. Uh, I don't take it lightly when a pastor extends trust on his behalf to you, asking you to make a difference in the life of a child. So this morning, I tell you how to do that. If you feel led to sponsor, and I hope that you do, I hope that you've heard the powerful impact that you can have in a child's life. Uh, Brandon mentioned going on a mission trip. I took a church from Mississippi to Columbia uh, back in October, and I got to meet one of our family-sponsored kid, uh, Abraham. And I'm telling you, it changed my life, and I know it changed his life. Having an American do anything on their behalf will absolutely blow a child's mind. And so you can be a source of encouragement, a source of hope. Your words can carry so much weight in a child's life. A child who has very little hope because of the hopelessness they live in. So I pray that you would really uh, think about doing this. So here's what you're going to do. Brandon's giving you guys time to do it before you leave. So as part of the worship service, as a response to worship, you can go to the table, pick up a packet. The child that's on this packet can only be sponsored by you today. This child's not available anywhere else on the internet. It's from the kids in Bolivia. So this picture represents a child just like Miriam's photo represented her. And this right here is Maya. Maya's birthday is tomorrow. And as I walk back to the table, if you're like, you know what, I want Maya to get the best birthday gift in her three years of life that she could get. And you can sponsor her today in a few days. She'll get word. Actually, she's three. So it's really her mom. You see mom on the photo here. Maya won't know for a few years the significance of your sponsorship, but the mother who wants desperately for her little girl what she can't provide will know the impact you're making. So Amen. go to the table, grab a packet. There's two ways to sponsor. There's a portion at the bottom, front and back, name, address, telephone number, all that good stuff, credit card information on the back, super important that you submit way to pay. So you turn that into a volunteer. So you grab the packet, go back to your seat, fill it out, Turn it back in as you leave. And the other way you can do that is right here on the front. There's a QR code. You can scan that QR code and digitally check out in less than 60 seconds. If you do that, still write your name, just your name on the card. Turn it in and say, hey, I did sponsor this child. Please don't take the packet home with you. If you're not going to sponsor, this is the only way this child can be sponsored. Um, man, what a great day it's already been. In just a Amen. few weeks, kids are going to be getting notification that they have a sponsor from Lafayette, Louisiana. They'll get a map out, and they'll try to find where Lafayette, <laughs> Louisiana is. Maybe they'll learn to say, go Tigers. Hey, hey. maybe so. I ain't yeah. go Cajuns, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, but thank you guys so much. Yes. I, I, this will change your life. And so this little girl, Maya's birthday is uh, tomorrow. I want to ask, and I'm, I'm guessing that's why you have it. In the first service, he had a little boy, Ian. That's right. It's his birthday today. Did somebody sponsor him? Oh, I, before I even went to the back. Did he? Okay, awesome. His birthday was today. So he's going to get notification that on his birthday, he was sponsored by someone in our church. Is it really? Oh, awesome. Today's, that's awesome. What a awesome. blessing, huh? Yeah. That's awesome, fantastic. man. Fantastic. Thank you, so, Brandon. Hey, thank you, Josh. Appreciate y'all. Come on, why don't we give it up for Josh and what he's doing. As the worship, the worship team's going to come back out. Again, uh, the service is not over yet. Like he said, you need to go get the packet, come back to your seat, fill it out. Uh, and even if you do it digitally, write your name, give it. That's how we have a head count. Uh, but I want to read one more scripture. And I read it this morning. I didn't go looking for this. I was reading. I just feel like it was God. I know it was God's stamp on today. I'm reading through the book of Acts again. This is Cornelius as he gets a vision about, you know, uh, Peter coming to preach the gospel to him. And Acts 10, 4 says, And the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Amen? So not only is it an offering to compassion or an offering at Mission Sunday, it's an offering to God himself. Isn't that powerful, y'all? Why don't you stand up with me and let's pray and seal this part of the service. Again, the service is not over. I encourage you, worship. We have one more song. We're going to worship too. Miriam's going to be in the back table. Josh, a lot of serve team members, including my daughter Bella, is back there. Let's pray. Let's pray over Bolivia. Let's pray over Miriam and her family and compassion and these children that still need sponsorship. Father, I thank you for the 54 kids that got sponsored in the first service. And I just pray, Lord, that you would, uh, whoever you have on their hearts, Lord God, uh, right now to sponsor a child. 
child. I just ask you would guide them to the child that you have for them to partner with, to bless, to sponsor, to present the gospel and all the physical nourishment and needs that they have, Lord. I thank you. It's an offering unto you today. And I just pray your blessing upon Bolivia, these children, this church, compassion, Lord God, on the local church and compassion uh, in Bolivia that compassion is partnering with. Lord, may you continue to use them to proclaim the gospel, to disciple children, to give them everything that they need to live to their full potential and purpose. We pray over Miriam and her husband Preston and their children, Josh and his family, and all the compassion across the globe. Lord God, may you be glorified as we give up an offering of praise and even a possible offering to these children. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you're ready to go do that, you can head your way, uh, head that way right now. If not, come on, let's worship one more time together. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.
we've been talking about rescuing children out of extreme poverty, right, in Bolivia and all over the world. But we know there's, you may have experienced physical poverty in your life. Maybe you've experienced emotional poverty. Or the worst kind is spiritual poverty. Jesus came to rescue us all from poverty. And most importantly, the depravity of sin that we've all been born into, a sin nature. And without Jesus, well, there'll be eternity that we'll never be able to be rescued from. We'll be eternally separated from the Lord. So before we leave, and those of you watching at LPCC, if you're here, would you just bow your heads with me if you're still in the, in the seats? And if you say, Brandon, you know what? Man, I don't know if I'm right with the Lord. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm right uh, with, with Christ. We talked about AC's, you know, uh, mom's service. We know she told her she was a believer, they rejoice, and she's in glory, she's in heaven. Where would you spend eternity if today was your last day? Thankfully, Miriam and others, myself, have been rescued through the blood of Jesus. If you say, Brandon, I'm not sure if today was my last day on this planet, where I would spend eternity, either with the Lord or eternally separated. But before I leave here today, I want to know if that's you, just slip up your hand and say, Man, I need to get right with Jesus. I need to give my life to the Lord this morning. At LPCC, if you're watching, come on, just lift your hands up. Sir, young man, I see your hand. Anybody else? Over here, ma'am, in the back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, anybody else? Let's pray together. If you, if you say, I need to give my life, surrender my life to Christ, let's pray together today. Can we all pray this together? Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying in my place. Lord, I know that I've sinned. I repent of my sin. I turn to you. I surrender to you. Help me to live a life that glorifies you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Come on, can we rejoice? Come on, the Lord's still rescuing those, snatching them from the pit of hell. Amen. If you made that decision today, there's a connection card in the chair in front of you. Fill out that connection card. Bring it to the info center. Uh, and, 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 and we have a Bible we want to pray for. You. If you need prayer for anything, we'll be up here. As we just sang that song, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Give you peace. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day. If you need prayer for anything, we'll be down here. Men, sign up for the men's retreat. We're going to have an awesome time in a couple weeks. Amen and amen. Thank you, worship team. God bless y'all.